Hey Luke here with catsandcarp.com and we're having some awesome winter fishing here and I'm going to show you how to do it too. Got a nice little double, little flathead and channel catfish and me and my boy Tom are going to show you what we did to catch these fish and uh, man, March is not too early to start fishing for catfish. Alright, let's get them back in the water Tom. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I catch catfish, especially in the winter time. Now, in this video, I'm using a boat, but a lot of the things I'm going to tell you apply to bank fishermen as well. So, whether you're bank fishing or boat fishing, this will give you a really good idea how to locate catfish, how to catch them, what baits to use, what rigs I'm using, the techniques I'm using, what's going through my head while I'm choosing where to fish, and just all the little ins and outs of going out and catching catfish in the wintertime. Now, a lot of people hang up their gear in the wintertime, but if nothing else, I want you to know that wintertime fishing can be awesome. It takes a lot more effort to figure out where the fish are, but once you get them dialed in, it can be some of the hottest action and you can catch some great catfish. Yeah, look at that, that's all shad right in there. It's gonna be like shooting fish in a barrel. When fishing in the wintertime, location is extremely important. However, when I say location, often what we're talking about is depth. Um, the fish tend to hold, all hold the same depth. You, you go all over the lake, all over the reservoir, and everywhere you go, the fish are holding more or less at the same depth. So when you're trying to find catfish in the wintertime, you're trying to locate them, often what you're really trying to do is locate the depth. And of course, catfish tend to be where the food is. So right here, you can see the shad. And all the shad are hanging out, like 90% of them are hanging out at uh, under 20 feet. Um, so all the spots where you're going to look for bait, where you're going to look for catfish, have to be deeper than 20 feet. You go in, in uh, places 19 feet and shallower, there's nothing. Check this spot out. It's 19 to 21 feet deep and there's not a single shad to be found. It's an absolute wasteland. But as soon as the depth drops down to about 25 feet, there the shad are, hovering right around 20 feet, 21, 22 feet deep, thick as thieves. This has to do with temperature. On this day, it was about 40 degrees and the water was 43 degrees. So the air temperature was lower than the water temperature. So the shad were way down deep. They're deep trying to get away from that cold air to get down to where there's a warm thermal climb on the bottom. On another day, just three days earlier, it was 65 degree air temperature. And you can see here the shad were hovering at around seven and a half feet. So those shad had come all the way up from the bottom we're at seven and a half feet and the catfish were there too, jumping and swimming and going after the uh, shad right there on the surface, just three days earlier. So the relative air temperature to water temperature has a big effect. If the air is much colder than the water, the shad go down deep. If the air is warm, the shad come up. So based on the heat, the shad uh, and other fish that feed on the shad go up and down in the water column. So location is really important. But often when I say location, it's all about depth. If you don't have a fish finder, read the shoreline to give you clues of how deep the water is. See how steep the slope is along the shore? That extrapolate that down into the water, that's deep water, really close to shore. A bank fisherman can get to 20 feet of water right here at this spot. Just across the reservoir, you've got some really flat shoreline. See it's kind of flooded and stuff? That's really shallow. 10 feet off of shore from there, it's three feet of water. 20 feet off from shore, you're looking at 10 feet of water. Over here, 10 feet off of shore, you're at 15 feet of water. 20 feet off of shore, you're at 20 feet of water. A bank fisherman can get to the exact same spots I can with my boat here on this reservoir if they just know what to look for. Now, of course, it's really hard to fish on a really steep, nasty shoreline like that. So over here, you've got a little gully formed by where uh, runoff has eroded away the hill. Right in here, this is where you access it. Walk down the gully, set up your gear here, and then cast the foot of the hills. And you can get to that deep water without a boat. One of the best baits in the wintertime is shad. I like it fresh when I'm cutting it up. I like it live when I can get it. Shad is a wonderful bait because the shad die during the wintertime from the extreme conditions and those catfish are there to gobble up the dying shad. 
Now to get to shad, you need a big cast net that can go deep. So you need a rope at least 26, 30 feet long. And you want a net that stays open as long as possible. So either you want a really big net or you want one of the deep hole nets from Betts. Right here I'm using a 10 foot net with one inch mesh and one pound of lead per foot. This is a 10 pound net. If you don't have a boat, try throwing your cast net from bridges. Just make sure to add some extra rope to the handle so you can still reach the bottom. If you can't catch fresh shad, frozen shad will do in a pinch. And if you can't get frozen shad, go to your local Asian supermarket and try to get mullet or herring or some similar bait fish. Live wells work so much better in the winter time because of the low temperatures. I lose hardly any of my fish, while in, in summertime, I lose half of them. Anywhere you can find lots of shad, you've got a really good chance of finding lots of catfish, but you don't want to fish right where you were chucking your cast net. When I find where I want to fish, I put my boat about a good casting distance downwind from wherever I think the fish are going to be. I chuck my anchor in about 20 feet downwind of where I think the fish are, and then I reverse the boat back and stretch out the anchor line. Then I throw another anchor off the back of the boat. Then I pull both anchor lines as tight as I can and I keep the boat pointed into the wind. This system works really well in lakes and reservoirs where there's no current to keep the boat pointed in one direction. So the reels I'm using are the Okuma Trio 55S. I've got 40 pound braid and I've got them on the uh, Chad Ferguson series uh, Whisker Seekers medium hard action seven and a half foot catfish rods. As far as rigs, I'm using a 10 aught and 8 aught circle hooks, and I've got three ounce leads on a slider and about 18 inches of leader. And I'm using live gizzard shad. When using live gizzard shad, where you hook them is really important. When I'm fishing on the bottom in still water like this, I hook them about a half an inch behind the dorsal fin and about a half an inch deep into the back. I like the hook to be as close to the middle of the body where the catfish is most likely to strike. Hooking the shad in the back also seems to help it swim naturally in still water. When you see me casting, you'll watch me jerk the rod tip up twice. Once, and then twice. What I'm doing is I'm pulling line out so that the bait sinks as straight down as possible. There's about 26 feet of water right there and I want the bait to sink down exactly where I put it because I put it in a very specific location. I'm casting to different features. I'm casting to the banks on either side of a trough and I'm casting to the middle of the trough and I'm casting to flats on the edges of troughs and I'm trying to see where the catfish are holding around this deep structure full of shad. And so I'm putting one rod in each different location and I'm marking where I'm casting to and I'm paying attention to where I'm casting to so that I can cast back there. You don't want your bait to swing around as it sinks down. So you give yourself about 15, 20 feet of slack so that the bait sinks more or less straight down where you cast it so you can hit the same spot every time. Now you'll see me clip bells on the end of my rods even when I'm fishing in the daytime. There's a really good reason for this. The worst thing that you can do is fish without bait on your hook. And about half the time when you get a hit, you lose your bait. Your live bait gets ripped off the hook. And if that fish hits your line without you noticing it, you'll sit there all day long with no bait on your hook. And if you keep reeling in and checking your bait, you'll end up killing all your bait. So what you do is you gotta have those bells. So look what's going on right behind me. I'm fussing around with one rod and there's strikes going on behind me. Both rods, you see both rods just went bang, bang. And because of the bells, I turned and saw it. So because of the bells, I knew to check both of these rods and sure enough, they had taken my bait. I got two turns of the handle. I could feel the difference between having no bait and bait on my hook and I reeled it in, rebaited. Now this was happening insanely fast. Uh, within the first 30 minutes of anchoring up on this spot, I had eight hits in 30 minutes and I went through 12 shad in 45 minutes. So I started cutting my baits in half. Now this, it doesn't just make your bait go further. It also, when you're losing fish like this, it's often from small catfish. So by cutting my bait in half, I increase the chances that that catfish will get it in its mouth. And look, I'm casting right back to the same spot where I lost my bait. Now this time with a half sized bait to try to get that smaller catfish. But man, it didn't take much much time and we started getting some some great fish here hi 
nice. Oh, that's a big one, Dad. Yeah, it's a nice one. Here's a nice typical winter channel cat caught on live bait. I catch them like this all day long. Real fat, healthy fish, hard fighting fish, loads of fun to catch. And while I'm getting him unhooked, bam, getting a fish on another rod. Just hot action like this all day long. And if you watch, you'll see with some of my other rods twitching while I'm doing this too. Why well, you gotta have the bells on. Also, you notice I just knocked my bell into the water, so that's why I make my own bells instead of buying them. And if you want to learn how to make your bells really cheap, check out my video on how to make your own bells for like 50 cents a piece, 25 cents a piece. You want to throw? Okay. Okay. Right there. Right there. Oh, big. Good big. job, Tom. Hey, Tom, how's your hands? Your hands warm? No, that's a baby. <laughs> I barely had those two fish in the water, and three more rods were twitching. This is how it is in the wintertime. It's fast, it's furious, because all the shad and the catfish, they tend to school up and be in tight locations. So it can take some work to find them, but when you find them, it's just constant action. That's why I tell people, if you don't get a bite in 15 minutes when fishing in the wintertime, move your spot. It's the 15 minute rule. If you don't see any action in 15 minutes, you're not where the fish are. Because when you're where the fish are in the wintertime, it's like this, constant action. Now you see where it's got this mud on here? There's mud in its slime. You'll see this in the wintertime because the fish will actually bury themselves down in the mud when it's really cold to stay warm. And so when you see fish that are covered in mud like this, they're really hunkered down in the mud. You'll see this in the wintertime a lot. Yeah. Right down. Got another fish. <laughs> this is a fabulous day of fishing. We brought you a friend. Look at this, how fat these channel cats are. These are just fatties. Look at these. He's got the he's got the mud on him too. See. See. Look how his belly. It's all covered in mud. He's been he's been burying himself down in the mud. Look how fat he is. Here, come on, sit on my lap. Woo! Look at that, another double. These catfish are just coming fast and furious. I think we've been doing this for 30 minutes and I'm already I, almost out of bait. I think I've used up 10 shad already. These guys are just plowing them. Look how fat and healthy these fish are. All right, let's get them in the water, Tom. People ask why I always catch and release these catfish, and I do it for myself and I do it for Tommy because it is so easy to wipe out the breeding population of catfish. I go through probably 40 to 50 pounds of catfish a week, uh, just catch and release. If I kept those fish, there wouldn't be much left. It wouldn't be very long before I started noticing a serious decline in the population. So if I want to keep one, I keep a small one. But all the others, we throw them back. You hold them and look at, look, look at mommy and say cheese. <laughs> All right, nice fish. You want to put them back in the water? Okay. okay, hold on. Wait, wait a second. Wait until Daddy gets the camera. Okay, you wait. Go for it, Tommy. Put it back in the water. Good job, Tommy. Here, high five, Tommy. <laughs> Well, at any rate, I hope you've enjoyed this video of my little fishing trip with my family. And I hopefully it's given you some tips and some ideas on how to catch more catfish in wintertime. So don't hang up your rods. Get out there, enjoy some fish, and thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out some of our other catfishing videos, including these two winter catfishing videos. And to get new fishing videos every week, don't forget to subscribe to the Catfish and Carp YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.